Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, welcome world, my name is Kevin Poorman. I am a developer advocate here at Salesforce, and with me today I have a very special guest, uh, Sandor Knopp. You want to say something about yourself? Hello, my name is Sandor Willkommen, and I'm a Salesforce MVP and developer group leader from Munich. I work for Apero, which is a German-based ISV. Okay, and um, Last time you were on with me, uh, what a month ago, maybe I think so. Yeah. yeah, about a month ago, and we worked on building an inbound email service. And so when we last left our heroes, we had set this up. We had set our org up, and we'd written some code inside Apex Recipes, the project, so that we could receive inbound emails and then create an email message record and attach that email message record to the contact that sent it. Um, Today, we're going to further that, and we're going to do it in a couple different ways. One, we want to be able to handle attachments. Um, I don't know about you, but it feels like I get more emails with attachments than I do without attachments. And so if you can imagine emailing pictures in, that sort of thing, uh, you're probably looking at, um, you know, dealing with attachments is a big deal. And then we're going to be able to write some unit tests for it. So uh, this is a quick run through of wh where we got last time. Uh, we've got our class here, inbound email handler recipes, and it imp implements this messaging inbound email handler interface, which has only one method that we have to hand have to implement called handle inbound email. And uh, we've chosen to build ours around this. This is the main chunk of our, our what our code is going to. Hey, look at that. I accidentally moved that code. Um, this is the main chunk of what our, our code is doing. We're going to try to find our contact and we're going to create that email record with the email that has come in. So what we want to do is we also want to basically capture attachments here and so to do that we'll have to write a method and then we'll write some some unit tests for this stuff so uh sender as as a as the email services uh guru as it were uh, and you know he's a guru <laughs> check out check out the bow tie on sander today it's amazing um Thank you. what what do we have to do to capture our attachments um, first of all, a little bit of, of cleanup, maybe. Uh, so since we know what we got to do, we just need to capture attachments. We can remove our to-dos down here mm. and uh, focus on the attachment methods. So last time you told me um, that we need um, to use a certain vocabulary when, when dealing with Apex recipe methods. So uh, I think what we need here is another create method. Okay. So because we need, want to create um, a new stuff and insert it into the database. And um, we could call it create files or create files by email attachments. Um, and then we think about uh, what um, properties we need. So it's the properties. I never get that right. Yeah, it's properties. Uh, parameters. Param or, or pri parameters. Okay, I see what you mean. So we probably want it as private because it's going to be a helper method. Again, um, <laughs> yeah. if you're relatively new to developing in the Salesforce ecosystem, your methods can be public, private, or global. If they're private, only other methods in the same class within the same file can access it. So this is because this is a helper method, we want to make it private so that only things inside this class can, can access it. Um, that way we don't have to worry about somebody down the line trying to use our method for something we didn't intend for. Um, exactly. That's really important. And we'll talk about that a little bit later when we do the test class. Right. Um, so I, I, I'd go for void, which means no return uh, for our method, just as we did for the create email record um, method we used last time. Uh, Almost there, Kevin. Yep. Yeah, there's a there's like a frame rate issue. It's like a you remember when you're like back in the day when you're playing games on dial up and like sometimes <laughs> it would stutter. My computer's stuttering today. Uh, so private void, and then we said create uh, files by email attachments. Yeah, and let's leave the parameters out for a while and just make the method so what what do we want to use so 
Um, the cool thing is that we're in, in Apex recipes and the big chunk of work, namely um, attaching any kind of file that is a blob uh, in, in Salesforce, um, a data type. Um, I, I think, Kevin, there is already a recipe for that. Yeah. So maybe we should have a look on the recipe first, and then we know what kind of parameters we need for the create files by email attachments method. So what I've done here is I have, um, I've pulled the files recipes over onto the right side. And so we can actually look at, uh, we've got a method for bulk inserting multiple files and linking those to, to a given record. So we can actually use this, um, this method create files attached to records and it includes or it takes as a parameter a list of these file and link objects so the file and link object is an inner class of the files recipes and let me scroll up here and we'll get to the top here and you'll see that it's just got three properties these are the three parameters we need in order to create a file and link it to a, a given record and so um, by creating an inner class we can create a list of these and then quickly you know, create a bunch of files. Um, so that's that's the way that works. And like I said, we've got our um, create files attached to records, which is just going to uh, to take those inputs and create them for us. It'll then uh, return a save result that we can use if we'd like. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. pretty simple there. So we can use that over here. But how do we get, actually get a hold of the attachments? in the email. I mean, I know they come in, we have access to them, but I don't remember what property they're on. Well, <clears throat> the email service comes with lots of um, predefined objects, which we've seen line six and seven and eight. So the handle inbound email method uh, and the inbound email handle recipes, yep. the other class in our, um, uh, brings us or needs email and envelope. And we talked last time about envelope and that it doesn't contain a lot of things and that the juice is in the email object, the messaging.email inbound email object. Okay. And luckily for us, uh, it has a very straightforward property called binary attachments. Um, and that's certainly something we need for, for our um, method the um, email dot binary attachments and uh, what i looked up obviously i can't remember it all the time what kind of type um, apex type these binary attachments are I was just about to ask and they are mess yeah they are messaging dot inbound email dot binary attachment inbound email dot binary okay um, yeah, that, that's right, but we might deal with several attachments. So a list. Um, so we need a list, yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, let's just, for grins and giggles, I just accidentally scrolled down. Uh, for grins and giggles, let's call this one uh, inbound attachments. Attachments? Ments. Ments, yeah. there we go. I can spell. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Okay, so we've got our inbound binary attachments, or inbound attachments that we can use, and I'm just going to mm -hmm. close file attachments here. Um, we, when we loop, I'm assuming we're going to loop over these, but let's actually, let's create a list of our uh, files, recipes, dot, file, and link object. Okay, here, new, new Apex. Um... The left part is the class name, so files recipes, and the right hand part is the actual inner class name. So we usually, or, or we often deal with as objects like contacts and accounts as Apex developers. Um, so this this kind of, how does this code look like, look, looks different than an S object. That's all I'm yeah. trying to say. It's not, so S objects are objects that you've defined in the UI. So if it's uh, an S object that you've defined, it's going to end in underscore underscore C, um, as opposed to what is just an apex object, which is what this is. So this is a, an inner class um, and therefore an, an object of the outer class or files, recipes, objects that we can create. Um, I'm going to create that list there because we actually want to create those file and link objects. And mm -hmm. then we can do a for loop over messaging inbound email 
binary attachment and we'll do um, current attachment. I mean, that can be, this is your iteration variable, so it can be anything you want, but current attachment makes sense to me. And then we're going to do that over inbound attachments. And mm -hmm. so each inbound attachment has, I'm guessing, basically the same things as a file attachment. So I'm, I'm guessing we're going to be able to get to the, the actual file contents. How would we do that? We use pre-built properties on the binary attachment object. Okay. So um, first of all, we need to create one of your Apex objects, a new one. Yeah. Um. It's a variable name, and then you can do a new. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Right. Okay, and then we need to write in a few parameters, like new file dot, uh, what was it, file contents, I believe? Yeah, yeah I can see it on the right hand side. File contents. Uh, and that's that equal. is um, our current attachment dot body. Oh, dot body, okay. Dot body, yeah. Okay, and then we'll have uh, whatever reason. new file dot, um, it's going to be file name. Well, as we, as we saw, yeah, uh, and that's the same property. It's the attachment dot file. Okay. Um, as you can see from our code here and from the code last time, you deal with several objects that somehow represent an email message, but have totally different properties or approaches to certain things. And then you need the attached to, I think, for from from the file service and that's what's currently missing hmm. so what do we want to what do we want to attach to we want to attach to the sender so the contact um whom we identified as sender so we need another parameter in our um method like contact id exactly id contact id so and here's, here's a philosophical question for you. Uh-oh. Um, it's a private method, and we already established that that private method is only usable within that class. Mm -hmm. And um, now imagine we fast forward time six months and we, we forgot implementation details, everything, and use the private method. Does it make sense to check for uh, contact ID being null or to check for inbound attachments being null in, in your experience. I'm, I'm very conservative here. So I say if it's po technically possible, then I should guard against it. Yeah, I think it is technically possible. So let's put a guard in. Um, I'm a big fan of, of guard statements. Uh, if you are new to the idea or have never heard it, the name guard statements, it's basically a null check or a check against invalid data. Um, I get the word guard and the, the term guard statement from a different language called Swift, where Swift actually has a keyword called guard. And the keyword mm. guard is tied, it, it looks very similar to an if statement. Uh, but if that if statement returns uh, returns false, then the method exits. So it's, it's a little bit more robust than your typical if statement, but they function very similarly, where, where the idea is if the data coming in is invalid, then reject it. Just stop using, stop executing the method. Um, guard against invalid data. Not data to insert. Okay, and so we'll do if um, inbound attachments uh, is null, is empty, or um, um, no, 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 it's null. Is it null? Oh, yeah, because, I guess. Because empty is a method call, and if inbound attachment is null, then it will... Ah, I think you want to check for null. Yep, you're right. So we're going to return. Yeah, because I see empty, still see empty. Yeah, you do. That's because I apparently don't type what I'm thinking. It's a malaise. And we have a similar guard statement in uh, um, the create email uh, record method. Yeah, down here. Uh, we used last time. 
uh, and I just want to reiterate the reason, our get sender method, uh, the first method we use to identify a possible contact might return uh, nothing. And that's why we decided that that method will always return a contact, maybe one without an ID, uh, which means it's not existing in Salesforce. And if it's not existing in Salesforce, we don't want to attach anything against it. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so we're checking for null here. We're returning. Now, yeah. you, we could probably also, we should consider throwing an exception. Um, I always consider that when I'm doing a guard, but I don't know that it makes sense here. Um, but what what is our desired behavior? If if there's no contact ID, we know we don't want to do anything. Right. If there's no uh, inbound attachment, then we know something is horribly horribly wrong. So I think on platform side. Yeah, I, I think we're good with just a return. Um, yeah, because. Too. Because it's void, we don't have to return a specific type of object. Um, but now we can, now that we we have that guard statement in there, what we can do is once we've created our list of uh, attachments to create, uh, then we can turn around and call that files recipes. Um, speaking of which, let me reopen that class. So our files recipes is a static method. So create files attached to records and we can just do files recipes and pass in our to create and we don't need the contact ID because that's embedded there yep and that's about it now we had an interesting dis interesting discussion earlier today when we were doing sort of the tech rehearsal and prep for this about drawing out um, a couple of things here one you'll notice that in other places like if i scroll down here we're using a constructor for the email message and we're using that constructor method rather than saying new email message and then saying you know message.text body message.html body because we can right we have that constructor there yeah. for the email message because that email message is an s object now our our um, file and link object is not an s object and as it turns out if we go over to files recipes and look at the actual inner class uh, all the way up here at the top, there's no constructors here. So we don't have a constructor pattern or constructor method to use like we did before. So we're having to do this, I'm not gonna call it the old fashioned way, but sort of the more manual way where you have to, you know, say new files dot and set the properties individually. But we could, if we wanted to write that as a constructor. Yes, that's the important message. We could create a behavior that works just as an S object, but it's more, uh, well, it's a little bit more a markup in the inner class. Then. Right. Um, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have reached our requirements. Ta-da! So we can receive an email, we identify a contact, and we store information from the email in the system, and we attach the files uh, to the contact. I think we're, we're still not done yet, because up here we've got... Okay. We've got to replace this comment with actually calling yes. our method. I bet. Um, yeah, I was create to files by email attachments. Our inbound attachments that is going to be. Let's see, that's going to be our um, email dot binary, binary attachments. Yeah. Is it binary attachment or attachments? It's attachments. That's what I thought. And this contact ID that's going to be sender dot ID from the line above Absolutely. it. So with that, now I think we're done. But there is a, a like okay. a little bit of a minor um, interesting quirk that we can talk about while we start working on our tests. Uh, I have the uh, I when I wrote the file recipes bit, I have it returning a list of uh, database save results, and the way we've written our method, we're just sort of uh, ignoring those save results, mostly because. Uh, if we have an exception occur, that's going to be bubbled up and caught by our actual try catch block up here. So, just an interesting little architecture side note as we go along. I'm going to save this real quick and we'll see if we have any typos or whammies. Um, and while that happens, I'm going to create a new class for our test. 
Uh, I'm going to call this one inbound email handler recipes tests. And we'll hit there. Did I'm you count the characters? Did I count the kit? No, I didn't count the characters. Um, <laughs> Let's see. So um, I love expressive naming. Um, Apex makes it sometimes hard because Apex class names uh, was it 40 or 80 characters long. I, I don't know. And um, sometimes that's that's not enough. And I had to stop creating my. Uh, I had to stop creating my class there because I don't have a directory for it. So let me fix that here real quick. Um, okay. Put us back on. I want to see whether or not that succeeded. So where is my social CLI? So because you talked okay. about the, the exceptions, um, the new, the, the bulkified method to create files attached to records, unfortunately doesn't throw exceptions, but, or at least not all exceptions. It doesn't throw DML um, exceptions. Um, so that would be a case um, if a DML exception occurred, uh, we wouldn't get notified in our inbound email handler because then a simple system debug would tell us something went wrong. Yeah, and that's a... I don't know that I have strong feelings over which way is better, but it is definitely an interesting, like... I'm all in, in Discuss amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay, let me see. And we're going to put this in a custom directory. And we're going to put this in email recipes. There we go. Okay. Public with sharing. That's uh, not, we don't need that. You no, know, but yeah, but what will we write in there instead? Is test is awesome. Yes. Yeah, private. That's the one I wanted to see. Um, we were talking about public and private a little bit. And um, what I do prevent by calling all my test methods, test classes private, is that. I myself will use some kind of internal method for, from this class in some other tests. And then dependency health starts if I want to make changes. So um, it should always be an, an opt-in to make a test class public and by that usable uh, by other test classes. Yeah, I think all of ours are, I mean, I could be wrong. Let me double check here. Files, recipes, I'm just gonna open up one. Yeah, they're all private. Yeah. Um, so, I always, when I create a test class, I always change it to private, I mark it is test, and then the very first thing I do is create a make data test setup method. Now it occurs to me with the inbound email handlers, um, because there are some quirks to testing inbound email handlers, that we may not actually have anything to create in the make data. And the reason that is, is when you create that, when you call that make make data in the test setup, it has to be able to insert something into the database. And we don't actually um, have anything we're gonna insert into the database in terms of testing this. The data we need, that fake email message we're going to receive and test the inbound in email handler with, that that can't actually be inserted pre previously. So um, we may need a, uh, may need to take the test setup. Um, no, you too fast, too fast, too fast, too fast, too fast. Too, okay. We talked about it. Uh, um, just a few minutes back. So what does our class do if we don't find any contact? Oh, that's a good point. It's going to not handle it the does attachments. Nothing. Yeah, it does nothing. <laughs> it, it does nothing. So we uh, have a... It doesn't store the email message. It doesn't attach any files. So we need at least a contact. And whilst you're typing it, another thing I always think about, especially in recent time, because that was my pet project last week, or still is, is in the first line where written at is test, should I use is parallel true or not? Is parallel but true? But that's maybe is... something for, for, for next episode of, of Code Life. Um, is... Running lots of tests and inserting lots of standard objects and avoiding uh, lock row issues. Um, parallel is the default, isn't it? Um, yes, so if you have a net new org and you didn't change the Apex um, run test parallel settings, then um, the default is run in parallel, yes. So I'm using our test data factory for this, and... This is awesome, cool. I'm going to set a couple things here. 
So um, some data that we're going to want to make sure we control as we test an inbound email handler are things like email. Yeah. And I'm going to put in my own here so that we can test with that. And then I'm also going to put in the account ID is equal to uh, test account ID so that we can is that one necessary because your test factory needs it because a contact doesn't need an account ID to be inserted it doesn't need an account ID to be inserted but I, I want to make sure that it's if we start having to debug things that it's not just a private contact um, so that's probably superfluous ah, interesting but... perspective yeah the, the 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 private contact perspective yeah but since we run what do we do with sharing well it depends on our context user yeah okay. yeah I'm with you um so I just like to do it whenever I create a contact, I always make sure it's created next to an account. Um, and I don't, now that I think about it, I'm, I may have to revisit my logic there, but um, for right now, I think that's, that's good. So we've got a, a make data here. Let's also create a um, make fake or make test email. Uh, okay. And then this will be, um, what is that? It's a, uh, the method is a inbound email, right? Yeah. So what we need to do for 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 our test class or for our test set setup is uh, prepare a few Apex specific objects to deal with emails. Amongst which is our messaging inbound email and the messaging inbound envelope, because those are the two things that we throw into our interface method. So we'll have, um, uh, well, so test email, and then we'll need but one for what? What I need to, yeah. So um, I'm trying to guess where where you're going, but uh, we will get there, I'm sure. So I'm looking for the email. If we have to, because we have to create that inbound email, the thing that we're sending to our method to our class, and that's the inbound yeah. email. Um, and then we also need one for the envelope, right? Yes. And that's Absolutely. In, that's just an envelope. Okay. Make test envelope. Since we're in a test class, why do we call it make test envelope and make test email? That's a good point. Uh, and, and, then and you know what? To copy and, paste. It's, and it's not yeah. make, it's create. I should follow my own naming conventions. And get. In that case, get. Your naming convention is get. We're not inserting here anything. We're uh, just getting stuff. I think, so get would be a return from the database. Create would be creating a net new object. Even if we're not inserting into the database, we're still creating a net new object. Okay. Um, so there, we got that. And then to create that, inbound email um, we just we just call create uh, we just call new email messaging inbound so messaging dot inbound email we'll call this one email is equal to new messaging inbound email yeah. and Absolutely. then um, do we so we can do this with the without the so lots, lots of no, yes. So we, it's an Apex object, so you need to to type everything out. Um, one one thing maybe. So since we will be reusing the email address, um, we could uh, extract your your code, uh, kjp at codefire.com and the test setup into a private static final variable and use it instead of uh, retyping everything. Okay, I got a question coming in from Max. Should data of the email message be escaped with something like methods from the SFDC encoder class before assigning to variables and eventually converting, committing to the database as an S object record? Mm, no, because the conversion is, so you have the 
depends what we're talking about. The email message has, has a text only body and an HTML uh, body, which are already encoded. Um, and for files, um, I think at least for text files, the platform handle is encoding there too. And for everything else, it depends what we're being sent. Would you agree, Kevin? I agree. I agree. Um, and, and basically, it's you're going to trust the platform to do the I-18N and, and um, the uh, UTF-8 conversions for you. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't... I don't touch encodings unless I, I need to, um, just because I feel like whenever I start getting into encoding and decoding uh, strings, I end up m making my head hurt. <laughs> it, 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 it gets messy, but on the other hand, us Europeans might have to deal with that more often uh, than uh, somebody who, who's mostly working with um, US-based uh, data. Let's put it that way. Well, I mean, our CSVs in Excel don't have a, a comma, for example. It's true. So when we create our email, do you think we do we have to worry about um, the headers? I don't think we need to worry about the headers for testing. No. Um, but we probably Not do need all. to set the plain text body. Uh, and we'll yeah. say, welcome, there are a few required live viewers. Fields, what else is required? We got from name, from address, subject, plain text body. Um, I guess we're going to need the attachments. Well, yes. So if you, that's one of the questions that I wanted to ask earlier. Now, um, when we do the test, what will we be testing? Will we be testing with private methods, or will we be doing one big chunk of tests? Saying if I send an email and the email has three attachments, then I expect. Bum, bum, bum. Right, so my general rule of thumb is to do um, sort of a, a quick win integration test where I'm testing the mm -hmm. whole kit and caboodle. I always write my positive test first because what I really want is I want that instant win of, okay, my code works, right? Then I'm going to yeah. go and I'm going to search for edge cases by testing the individual methods. That's kind of how I tackle things. Okay. Um, so... Um... In that case, I suggest we add the email attachments already to our create email method. Okay. Or at least one of them. Uh, um, messaging dot inbound email dot binary attachment is our return type. I'm going to do a create attachment. Um, and well, that's a pretty straightforward file. It just needs um, a file name and the file body. Yep. So, so uh, we need to create a new attachment and set the two properties. Messaging email binary attachment attachment. And as you can see, um, writing test for inbound email services mostly. Um, creating a few objects and setting properties. You don't have a lot of data involved uh, for a simple case. And uh, just need a file name. Uh, we should probably make Whatever that configurable. Um, and then blob. So we're gonna do the file name is equal to file name attachment. Here's the guess. You you added parameters because you might be thinking that methods like this one should be callable from a desk data factory. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So in a future episode we might move these new private methods into our test factory. So we're gonna return the attachment there. Um, how many attachments should we put on to our, our test email? Well, for a quick positive test one, because we didn't really do a modified version and our method currently returns one attachment. Um, and we'll say... Oh, that's a nice one. Hello. 
world text uh, blob from string. Yeah. The easiest way to create a blob in Apex for testing purposes is just use uh, blob dot is it value of or from string? I think it. Um... Well, my code completion returned from string, but it's always good to check. So we can do blob methods, apex. I love the blob. It just has a great name, blob. <laughs> I'm thinking of this uh, old and honored B movie. It's value of string. Good catch. Value of, and we'll say hello code live viewers. Okay, um, boom. And no so visible. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, right. I had my syntax. Yeah. That's what I get for writing several languages. Um, code in several <clears throat> languages. Okay. I hear you and I feel you. Um, that's when we get when writing for JavaScript and Apex at the same time. Um, that's what Kevin trying to say. Um, maybe we should explain that a little bit. So we create a new list. And what are those curly braces doing? The curly braces say create a new list with a, the literal value of this in the list. So our method create attachment is going to return a single binary attachment that will be automatically added to this list. So I'm creating a list and adding an object to it all in one step. So could I just add a comma and copy and paste it and then get two attachments? Uh, you could, you'd probably want to change the, the name. I mean, we could, can do this here we can let's, oh, let's try that like that so basically we are creating a test email that has two attachments yep and so awesome. we've got that there um now this is wanting us to return it, it wouldn't save because i didn't actually have all the right i need to return email like that from this method i'm trying to think if we need anything else. Uh, Daniel is asking, do we need to set the MIME type subtype on the attachment? I don't think we do. Um, we don't, not for our simple tests. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to use an inbound email service uh, professionally, then you obviously want to know, might want to know where's the email coming from and who's responsible for setting and coding and attachment encodings on the sender side. Yep, and I got a little bit of an issue here where this didn't binary attachment. That's better. Okay, I think we're starting to Oops. to fix those typos there. And um, so, if we add on line forty-seven, or I'll do that quickly myself because I can. Yeah. Uh, if I do a quick return null for a moment, we should be able to push it. Well, it tells me the that inbound email. email envelope is not a valid type. Uh, inbound, um, inbound, new messaging, inbound, envelope, no email. Oh, okay. There we go. That should be it. Now in our, um, let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, as you know, I like to do, I'm going to put my test here on the right. Um, and we can look at our actual code here. I don't think we actually use the envelope for anything. So I think we can probably for right now, leave create envelope null. Uh, actually, no, it just, it wants us to return something. Yeah, I, I, the, it's easily to create just uh, one property. Um, and that's the from address. So, um, from email or from address? Uh, from address. Um, this is going to be from your 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 email address. Is the from email? Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. That's um, about it. Rahul, we are I'm using um I'm using tab nine as my code completion tool. I'm a big fan of it. If you uh, install the Code Friars pack extension pack for Visual Studio Code, you'll get tab nine as well. It's part of my extension oh, pack that I, I put in. Um, invalid syn so, constructor syntax. Yeah, because messaging the inbound envelope is not an S object. Yep. Um, so we can use this constructor shorthand. We really need to do a new. Yeah, yeah. As promised, it's a lot of typing to get the first test version run, but then it gets easier. And you don't need to type because after this is pushed to Apex Recipes, you can just simply copy and paste it. All right. Let's see here. Saving, saving, saving. I think that's great. I think this and should the be next fun. Step, as yeah. far as I understood you, is to do one chunk of positive test. Yep. Uh, which is, let's call our cup. Static test method. I always forget. I always go and I look at <laughs> files, tests. To make sure that's um, so static. In current away. Apex code, uh, we often see the app is test annotation order Apex code. You might find static test method void um, as well. So we're going to have a positive test here. Um, and I'm labeling this as an integration test. It's called an integration test because we're, we're testing the full integration of all of our code. So if you think of a happy path test, that's going to be a positive test because good inputs in, good inputs out. You're testing that. Um, an integration test is different than a unit test, even though we're writing a unit test. We're doing an integration test because we're testing the full, the full width and breadth of our code rather than one little chunk of it, one little unit of it. Um, so in order to test this, we're going to need um, to create our, we'll, we'll get our, um, we'll, we'll automatically get our contact and account. So what we mm -hmm. need to do down here is get our contact, right? Get our contact. No, no, no we're going to no, assert against no. it, won't we? We'll need the uh, contact ID. It, it, Depends what we want to assert. That that's the, that's the thing. That's true. Um, so um, we might need a contact ID, but if we want to go uh, first quick test only, then we just need the email and email envelope because those are the necessary parameters of our inbound email. Yep. Um, so inbound email. And whilst you're typing, we can think about what do we want to. Assert. So what we did today is we will be creating files. So we can assert a certain amount of content version being present after our code is run. This is maybe one assertion. Um, I'll write that down here. So what else do we want to assert? We also create email message records and email message relation records in order to store our email in the UI beautifully. That's true. So we actually, and we need to... Is there anything... We need to actually we call our do with the, And if, if we really want to go full blown, we could also assert, um, is there a so-called content document link? between uh, our contact and new files from email attachments. Let's do new uh, dot handle inbound email. There's that. We'll do test dot stop test. Yeah, if we don't want to do anything with the result, so handle inbound email returns a result object, and I would use that return value and at least assert for uh, success. So um, is my result a success result? 
Um, okay. That's messaging dot inbound email results. Okay, so we've got result. And the very first thing we can do here is do a system.assert result expected result to be positive. Uh, it's result dot I forget what what is the property we check on result. Dot success. Dot success. Dot success. Yeah. So we expected a result so to be when... positive. So there's our first assertion. Uh, then we can assert uh, that our sim go ahead. Um, a simple assert is, okay, we have two attachments, hello world and hello world two dot text. So we can uh, assert a count of content version uh, against uh, our amount of files, which is two. So uh, system assert equals maybe. Um, so we're gonna have and two. We have two, and then a select count from content version. Now, can we query content version? I remember there's, I always forget the rules for content version and content document link and content document and searching, uh, querying them. Um, I, I think content version is safe. Content document link is yeah. more difficult. Okay. And then um, we can do a similar system assert equals. Uh, it's gonna be two. And then this one will be select from content document link where um, linked entity ID? Yeah, is it, is it linked entity ID? Linked entity ID I'm equals, not sure. It's either gonna, yeah, it's either gonna, yeah, I think it's linked entity ID and then we actually need our contact ID. Yeah. So we will need to, to let's do this, come on. Expected to find the, the attachments linked linked to contact. Okay, I'm gonna scroll back up here, and I'm just going to grab the contact ID real quick. We got the contact ID that should go there fine but I need to need a colon um, yep. and then exactly. we should probably assert that we actually got the email message right uh, the email message record that we inserted yes and also um, the email message relations and uh, since I spoiled the surprise last time already uh, although we insert in our code only one message relation um, we will find two message relations um, when we do a count on them. Select count from email message. It's email message relation, right? Yeah. And one of the things. There. Email message relation. Uh, expected to find two email message relation objects. Now, if we have an email message relation, we can't create that email message relation without having created the email. So we can write one assertion here against the email message relations, knowing that if we can't create the email message, we won't get the email message relations. Right? Okay. Um, okay, okay, okay. Now, that's one of those like, things where I feel clever having done it, and then I'm going to be mightily confused six months from now, so I'm going to leave myself Yeah, that's what, what I... <laughs> but why a comment if you just can type in the same assert and say one email message inserted? Okay, fine. System.assert I mean, equals one. I mean, 
mean, it's special knowledge. And honestly, I didn't know that uh, you can't have an email message without also having email message relations. And and in theory, the the sixty two assert could pass, but the sixty three assert could still fail. That's true. All right. So I save that. Let's see if this this works. Okay, bets are being expected. Oh, look at that. It's saved. All right. It's saved. Shall we run it? It passed. It passed. Yes, of course. That's, that's the thing. Run this test. Because if it doesn't pass, we have eight minutes to debug. No pressure. Failed to run. No pressure. Ruh row. What? Okay. DML insert. It failed. First row. Required fields are missing. Missing name. Oh, you know what? Name on contact. <laughs> we we oh, missed the contact name. Yeah, missing the content name. Or is it the account that's missing the account name? Just asking. It's a great question. Not an expert in your test factory, and I couldn't read the. Uh, um, could I? No, I can't read the. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna just give both a, a name. Uh, we'll do. Yeah, it's not. It's got to be. Contact. It's got to be account because contact is gonna have first name and last name. Yeah, exactly. So deduction. Uh, name. Yeah. We, Testing. Okay. We should still use um, last name for contact. We should. That is also a required field. Yeah. I think. Last name equals. Oh, that's exciting. All right, we'll save that. And in the great world of test-driven development, we would have written this test beforehand and then have our actual code. I, or at least parts of the test I used beforehand. to be all in test -driven. on test-driven development. Do it first. Write the test first. Watch them fail. Go write code to make them pass. Tweak as necessary. And the older I get, the more I'm like, just please write tests. Like, just like <laughs> I don't care if you do it beforehand or afterwards. Just please write tests. Um, I'm I'm not I'm not really re religious on beforehand or but I'm saying if you develop it side by side a little bit of this and a little bit of that exactly um, it, it gets the perfect flow for me. Okay, we got a failed. Oh hey, <laughs> we got a whole slew. Of... <laughs> what is it now? <laughs> oh. Okay, uh, inbound it's email. It's a exception. So did we did we wire it up properly? At all? Well, we've got some metadata tr trigger handlers issues. We got some result to be positive seven thirty five. Yeah. So the the, the our um, did we swallow an exception somewhere? I'm not sure. I'm a little confused as to reading this message. Um. So. Test name, integration test positive. That's the class being That's tested. Test. Assertion exp on outcome and percent. And, oh, this is the runtime. Took 735 milliseconds to fail. But where did it fail? Well, on your on your first assert on result success so you have in line yeah oh, oh yeah, far, yeah. Far, up, 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 up. yeah 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 up, 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 up. This, yeah so right the, there the, so what we see is that we probably have an exception somewhere at some point because um we only set success to true if everything succeeds or let's check the the actual code do we set the result success properly or um no we don't we don't see so we are under line 16 please why result of success is true yeah result dot success is equal to true that was a simple one to four minutes to, to fix let's see if that actually fixes it Ooh, excited. Close that. 
Why is it like when we get into debug mode, it takes longer for the file to save? Have you noticed this? <laughs> <laughs> it gets three minutes to eight. Hurry up, hurry up. Like the test will, the test, I mean, the last one only took 735 milliseconds to fail. So hopefully this will also not take very long to run. Okay, we got another failure. Let's see. But just, oh, oh. Okay, so we are still with the same. So somebody else suggested that we should um, put the result message in the assertion failure, which is true. So what we should do is expected result to be positive, and then I'm going to go out here and do a plus result dot um, message. Yeah, we'll save that. Now our report will tell us what actually failed. <sighs> yeah, and that's. Maybe a downside of the one happy path testing, because we have several private methods, uh, which, when tested individually, maybe could have found the issue totally. uh, sooner. Totally. And again, this is all like, when should you write your unit tests? What kinds of unit tests should you write? And it's one of those where I'm not particularly dogmatic about it. I just want you to write tests and I want you to be finding these kinds of issues before you get to production. And whether or not you write that integration test first or last doesn't matter to me, so long as you're, that's not the only thing you're writing. So, okay, we've got um, argument cannot be null. Inbound handlers create email record line 81. So we'll go down here to line 81. Email to address. Joined. Did we forget two addresses in our um, two addresses? Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. That's in the create email part. Yeah. And that is a list of strings. So new list, so let's do a new list string and use your cool uh, use brackets to fill my list immediately. And what do we want to put in there, the two addresses? Um, are those, um, I think I can see, I, we need curly braces. So it doesn't really matter so long as we have something in there. Okay. A few seconds, just a few seconds. You can do this. The force is with us. And once again, and that's maybe also a good learning to see, well, maybe the issue is not really with the code you wrote to do something, but with the test code. Exactly. All right, so let's run our test one last time here. Uh, by the way, while this test is running, Sander, I want to thank you again for joining me today. This has been a lot of fun. Um, we've got some great engagement on the community. Uh, some, some people I recognize in the community. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Pass. <laughs> right as two o'clock hit. So with that, on a positive thank note, you. thank you for much for tuning in. I will see you all next week. I have a special guest, um, Jennifer Barrett, who's going to be joining me, and we're going to be working on the stub provider and a generic stub provider to rule them all. So thank you very much, and I'll see you next week. Cool.